Welcome collectors, in this installment of Diecast Emporium, it's another one of those quarantine file videos. We're going to be taking a look at my entire collection of cat medium range dozers. This was uh, requested by one of the powers at B, at uh, one of the partners of this channel. So, of course, when they request one of these, it has to get done. So, hope you guys enjoy this video. We're going to be going from smallest to largest. Cat defines the medium range dozers from the D4 uh, all the way up to the D8. So this video will not include the CCM models in my collection of dozers. Again, if you guys want to see those, uh, go ahead and look in the YouTube search bar. Just type in Diecast Emporium CCM collection. That video should pop right up. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at each of these. I'll show you them. I'll say a few sentences about them. And uh, then we'll move on to the next one. So, this one is an NZG Caterpillar D4E, a long out-of-production model, but still one of the favorites in my collection, just because of uh, how old it is and how still remarkably good condition it is. Uh, I did purchase this at least secondhand uh, off the secondary market a few years ago. And uh, it's one of the ones that has survived. It looks really good. Not the best to detail, of course, for those old-school NZG models, but it functions just fine with the blade raising and lowering. And uh, those rubber tracks don't really roll that well, but they do look the part. And I like the uh, blue overall color of those uh, window tin. So that's the D4E. If I didn't mention, all of these will be in 1 to 50 scale. Next, we fast forward to the Norscott... D5G XL. Uh, at this point in time in history, Norscott was still dealing with rubber tracks, and it really shows on this particular dozer. And uh, the rivet connections were not painted, so it's really stood out on the ripper especially, and on the blade. But it still had decent functionality, including with the blade. And for its time, this I believe was released around 2002, it was a solid overall dozer, and a lot of people bought these and customized them with track swaps and things like that. And there was also a German, a rare German version of this released. I don't remember the German factory colors, but it was green and white. And periodically those still pop up on eBay. Next... We have the Norscott Cat D5K2 LGP. In my opinion, a very nice, solid overall model. I like the LGP style tracks on this. The ripper on this, at least on mine, never could stay in the raised position, which was always a huge deterrent for me. But the blade, front blade overall, had some solid movement. And the detail on this dozer, again, for its time, was pretty good overall. The tracks moved well on a surface with friction. And it's a, it's a very solid, what I would call, I know these are technically categorized as medium-sized dozers, but these are overall pretty small. Okay, next we have the, sticking with Norscott, we have the first of the two D6K XLs that were produced by them. Again, the same standard functionality that you would expect with a blade and ripper movement. It was always really interesting to me that Norscott really never produced a dozer with a winch or really with any other configuration other than really what you see. And I'm sure most of that was due to what Cat wanted. But the really uh, unique point about this dozer was the fact that they worked in opening doors on both sides. So you could do that. And they actually swung all the way open. So again, you could pose this with the doors all the way open if you wanted to which was innovative again for the time. So that's the D6KXL. Now I mentioned that they made two of these. Here is the other one that they made for the military. This is not really what these look like in real life. Of course they would have an up-armored kit on it. 
um, protection around the tracks and the crucial parts such as hydraulics and engine, all that stuff, which really would have been awesome had they gone all out and mimicked uh, what the Marines have and what the Army has, especially what EOD has. I think it would have been a really great and unique model, but again, I'm sure they were working with a restricted budget, so they just kind of went with military tan. But overall, maybe in the future, um, it would be great to see a uh, either an all-out IDF-style dozer uh, or something like what we have. Definitely would be cool, I think. Let me know what you guys think down below if you'd like to see one of those, if you would, if you would consider purchasing that and adding that to your collection. All right, next. On to Tonkin Replicas. We have a D6R XL. They made three different versions of these, and you will see all three of those. This is the standard cat black and yellow. Um, reviews were mixed, to say the least. There were several people that liked these, several people that didn't like these. Um, they were detailed. They had roof antennas, they had some nicely detailed hydraulics, especially to the ripper. But some of the functionality lacked severely in terms of the blade movement and tilt, things like that. So if you own one of these, or if you've had a chance to get your hands on one of these, it's likely that you have an opinion one way or another. So that's that. Now here is the military version. Do your tracks hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Uh, they labeled this as a D7 and sold it as a D7, which is incorrect, obviously. Um, it is just a repainted D6. And again, going back to what I said about the, the Norscott military dozer, this really would have been great if this was a totally brand new casting with up armor and, you know, maybe even a weapons port for like a 240 Bravo or something like that. Like you would really see in a war zone or if this vehicle is being used to uh, breach buildings with insurgents or being used to sweep mines and IEDs, again, real-world applications that the military uses these type of dozers for. Um, hopefully, perhaps maybe Diecast Masters or somebody else could do one of those. I think it would be a fantastic seller, and it would pay homage to uh, our troops. Maybe maybe it could even raise money for our troops. Maybe a portion of the sales could go to the Wounded Warrior Foundation or something. I don't know. I wish I had more sway because that's something I would certainly push for. But at any rate, there's the military one. Next, we have the mining white version. Again, all three of these versions, if you're just now tuning into the video, are were made by Tonkin Replicas. Long been discontinued for a few years, no longer directly available. You'll have to go on the secondary market to find these. They're all D6Rs. XLs. So there you go. I'll let it rotate one more time. Whether you buy the cat yellow, the military tan, or the mining white version, the functionality is all the same. All right. Next, we have a Norscott. D6T XW with a VPAT blade. VPAT, again, if you're not familiar, most of you are, is uh, an acronym for Variable Pitch, Angle, and Tilt, which describes the function of the blade. Now, this is now in the, again, started off as a Norscott model, but this is now in the Diecast Masters um, Core Classic Series range, so it's still being produced. And one thing that I would love to have seen done, still a great model, but have some sort of uh, cording or wiring going from the GPS pods uh, to the top of the engine covering. But if you are a modeler which, with any sort of skill, which clearly I am not, um, you could perhaps 
do that yourself once you purchase the model, and that will add so much more realism and immersion factor to your model. Or if you're not a fan of these GPS pods, they are very simple to remove from your blade, if you would like to do that at your own discretion. Tracks move very well on a surface with any sort of friction. You can raise and lower the three shank ripper. And the biggest selling point of this dozer is, of course, the fact that the uh, VPAP blade is very uh, positionable and moves quite well. So very solid dozer for its time. Again, the first version by Norscout was released in 2007, so it was one of the first models to feature, at that time, Cat's newest trade dress. So it was very popular. Okay. Moving on to the last of the D6s, the newest of the D6s. Here is the D6. And this has... What does this have on it again? I always forget about this one. This has the S SU blade. Um, and, of course, the, the new modern hex logo. Cat's newest logo. Obviously, you see the sweeps, which is unique to this model. And another selling point for this, which, again, I love. I wish more dozers had this, especially if dozers have to have rippers is you can take out, remove the shanks, position them at your own discretion, so you can have either one shank or three shanks or whatever you'd like to do. Uh, Diecast Masters offers you the uh, ability to do that. And you can remove or insert the operator at your own discretion. So very cool to have a dozer with the sweeps and the uh, option to do whatever you want with the ripper. So there is that version. But they didn't release just one new D6. They released two. Here is the other one. This one features another VPAP blade and LGP style or low ground pressure style tracks. This one has a winch at the back, which you can insert or take out. Stairs fold down on this. You can take the top of the cab off to put Bob in or out, whatever you want to do. Uh, fantastic range of motion on the tracks. Blade is also exceptional. Certainly, even if you, because there are many of you out there, even if you're not quite sold yet on the modern hex design, this is certainly um, a great model to own, I think, anyway. There we go. Don't know why the camera decided to unfocus itself, but maybe it has ADHD. Who knows? Great dozer. I'll show you the other one just in case. For a second, it was not focusing. There you go. Both of these, currently in the Highline series, currently uh, still available from Diecast Masters. And I have done an inclusive review of most of these models, but definitely of these two. So again, if you want a more inclusive and in-depth review, just search these out on my channel. And you can see these. Okay, moving on to the D7. This is the D7E by Norscott. This, um, the significant factor about this tractor is that it was the first electric drive dozer and one of the, one of the first dozers by CAT to not have the elevated drive sprocket. Pretty cool machine overall. Um, it did have the GPS pod on it, which again, you can remove if you are not a fan of that. This is still available in the CAT catalog. It has been rebranded as the as Diecast Masters, so Diecast Masters offers this still. So if you're a fan of technology and understand the history and significance of this uh, particular dozer, you're going to want to add this to your collection. And then we have the, this is a much newer version of it by Diecast Masters, released within the past couple years. This is the D7E, and this is in a pipeline configuration, so it has an adjustable angle blade, which you can, uh, obviously as the title implies, you can adjust it to whichever way you want by these screws. Uh, you also have a winch here on the back. Again, Top is removable if you want to put a figure inside the operator's compartment. 
very, very sweet looking machine. I, I, I personally was very excited when they announced this. It was something completely different. It wasn't your standard style of dozer, and uh, it certainly stands out in your collection. Also, this machine is available in the uh, Dozer Evolution series by Diecast Masters, so you have an o you have an older style, excuse me, easy for me to say, um, Dozer and a newer style Dozer, which is this one. Um, again, if you want a closer look at that set, search it out on my channel. You can check it out. All right, on to the D8, which is the largest of the medium range Dozers. Here is the first iteration of the D8R. This was produced by Norscott in 2001-2002. So uh, allow yourself to go back in time a little bit, as we've just seen the updated dozers with metal tracks. This one obviously has rubber tracks. The functionality isn't the greatest on this. The rivets are all unpainted. Um, not the highest hydraulic line detail. Um, but for the time, it was... It was all right. It was solid. And they also updated this to include in a low boy set by Norscott a couple years later, and they updated it to the D8R Series 2, which was just a, a nomenclature or a decal update. There was no update in terms of functionality or anything else on the tractor, just, just a decal update. So, this machine, despite its limited functionality, stood the test of time all the way up to the corporate change and the Diecast Masters buyout. And I'm so glad that it did, because here is Diecast Masters' updated version. This is the D8R Series 2, metal tracks, updated functionality, um, obviously a little bit of paint change. And it looks so much better, in my opinion. Definitely does the D8R Series 2 justice now. Uh, because this was their Core Classics version, in this version the operator, which I commonly refer to as Bob, is not removable. But that doesn't bother me, because I think the definitely the, the updated change far outweighs that gorgeous looking dozer. So, there you go. All right, down to the last couple. Here we have a Norscott D8T. This was also, uh, once the buyout happened with Diecast Masters at the Diecast Masters Takeover, this was slightly updated, but here is the original. Single shank gripper in the back. Um, lots, and, lots and lots of detail on here. The blade does function pretty well. It has a good range of tilt and up and down motion. So certainly if you're a fan of um, D8s, a nice, nice solid dozer. And then we have the D8T with an 8U blade, which is this casting, but with a different blade and different tracks. So here it is right here. You can see that the blade now has the um, spill guard, which has been perforated, so you can see through it. The hydraulic line has been detailed, and I believe that that is... Yeah, that's a different ripper as well. So for all intents and purposes, completely different dozer. And if you had to pick just one, even these rams with the lights are different. Those, each of these rams has two lights on it for a total of four, whereas the other one only has uh, one on each ram for a total of two. So for all intents and purposes, this is a much better and uh, totally different D8 than the other one, which with obviously the blade being the biggest difference. So there you have it, collectors. That is my entire lineup of Caterpillar medium range um, dozers or track type tractors in 1 to 50 scale. Hope you enjoyed this video. Took a little bit of time to put this together. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.